Okay, this was an impromptu pickup on Black Friday. I yeah, I saw this. Uh, this was on was going to be on sale at a local store, um, Heroes World, and uh, and these things are really hard to come by. Actually, if you want to look at these on eBay, they're going for like a thousand plus, but. Um, With the Black Friday sale going on, it was a deal to not to get it. Um, so, and we're here. We're talking about Canadian dollars as well. So, um, so I got lucky. Uh, like I said, these are things are hard to come by. And. What you're seeing here is a 3-0 Transformers Bumble B Optimus Prime. I think this came out, I don't know, over a year or so ago. And yeah. So Oops, finger just got in the view there, by the way. All right, so just turn this around. Oh. And as far as I know, this stands about 19 inches tall. So, yeah. Box looks like this. The cover that you saw just slips off. Slide it off, um, pull it off from the top. So, okay, so you have your Autobots. Sign Optimus Prime. Okay, and so it's here from the Transformers movie Bumblebee. So that's how he appeared in that movie. Gen, Gen 1 design. I'm just going on, continuing on. Taking this top off reveals. Upper part. I'm guessing these are the instruction manual. Um, to my knowledge, this has two. You have a choice of um, of how to um, present Optimus, and either in Earth mode or Cybertron mode. In other words, how he appears on Earth and how he appears on planet Cybertron. So it's somewhat somewhat uh, differs with different parts um, and since I know these parts here are Cybertron as well as this chest plate here because there is no there are no wipers windshield wipers so if you want to use a Cybertron Cybertron uh, mode you'd swap these whatever is on on default for these here and also the smokestacks I believe are different as well yeah this this one smokestacks here and these also I believe are on the sides of the arm both arms uh, yeah okay so again just a manual It says here requires batteries. The batteries are for the eyes and for the gun because um, it lights up. There's a, I think it's an LED here. I'm not mistaken. The batteries go in here. 
these things light up. So, yeah. Uh, let's see what else is behind this. Just quickly peruse. Here we go. Again, I can mention the for the gun battery. So it'll light up. And there are adapters for the left and right hand. Otherwise, um, you wouldn't be able to attach the gun to both hands without these. And this is where the batteries go for to light up the eyes at the top there. And to turn on the light, you uh, simply have to just press the top of that. Here, as you can see here, push on and off, turn on the lights off and on. Okay, yeah. Function. All right, that's it for this one. Okay, left the upper half of the box. Here we get to see Optimus. It's huge. I didn't, oh my gosh. There are smokestacks that go to the sides of each of his arms, respectively, right and left. What about the detail on this? I've seen other videos on this, like numerous videos, so I don't think I'm going to be going through all, all that. But I, all I know is that this is very articulable. Uh, we can do a number of poses with this. Um, it's the gas can, I believe. Touch. But yo, this is huge. It looks awesome though. <laughs> It's probably heavy because I believe there's also some die cast part. Yeah, it's heavy. Okay. Okay, I'm just shooting this for future reference for myself. Um, just in, as to the orientation of how the battery should be placed inside. Uh, Okay, just and if I do press this button here, lights up. Press it again, fades off. Nice. Okay, so. Okay, here I'm back. So let me just turn on the. There you go. Okay, I went. I'm going with the uh, Earth mode. I just because uh, I grew up with that mode, I can relate to it more than the Cybertron mode. Um, but um, putting in the parts was. For the most part, easy. The hardest part was putting on this the side armor here because the ball joint kept moving. So, um, yeah. But okay, it looks good, man. I mean, <laughs> oh, man, I don't know what to say, but this looks awesome. This is definitely an improvement on over the um, the Yolo Park I built this past summer. Obviously, I mean, I mean, looks good, but uh, yeah. Well, one more thing I failed to um, mention was that. With the Cybertron mode, there are covers for these tires here for, for each side. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't think I'll be. Well, maybe I will. I don't know. We'll see. Because <laughs> honestly, the, the I don't want to keep switching the parts. When you keep doing that, it'll it'll just loosen the points of contact and. Uh, through friction and you know, I don't want to do that 
so really yeah that's just not advisable if you can just keep switching it out it'll eventually in time it's going to loosen so i don't plan on switching these out for whatever mode um, but yo man this looks so good so good so good so good If you've seen the uh, the other video that I did on the Yolo Park version, um, the, in terms of the articulation, it's pretty much the same. Um, it's very articulable, like the, the legs, the arms. I mean, take a look at this part here. This one here. Eesh, yo, the fingers. Okay, so let me just switch this up a bit. I'll be back in a sec. I'm just doing more of a wide shot in this case because looks really good. The weathering also, look at this dry brush weathering. Very nicely done. Not too excessive, just enough in certain places where where you would find you know weathering on the edges right and you know when i also unbox this thing this thing smelled like um some oil parts oil machine parts it smells like that <laughs> it's kind of a, i don't know whether a that was a purposely done but it this thing smells like some mach oiled machine parts metal parts um sorry about the lighting guys it's just uh it's more of an impromptu show me this thing i think I'll, you know what i'll just let me just do it in this angle then Check out the details there. I mean, I'm loving the <laughs> the weathering on this thing. They did a great, great job on it. Great job. Again, more dry brush weathering, dry paint. Tires also looks worn. Again, more weathering on the edges. That detail there, awesome. I don't know what else to say about this, but just I guess let me just speak a thousand words. Then, yeah, guess tank. Looks great. <laughs> no, 
Uh, one thing this that this doesn't have is the uh, matrix leadership. It doesn't. This chest won't open. Um, that's something. Okay. Amazing job with the head. Again, like I said, with the articulation. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm going to move it too much. Alright, move the head down. Up. Great job. Again, the weathering on the on the head, it's just oh, oh my god. It's so good. I prefer personally the Gen 1 uh, iteration of Optimus. I'm not really a fan of what was uh shown in the Michael Bay movie. It was just well nice, it just doesn't compare to this. It's just this one that just looks classic. Anyway. Okay, of course we have the inevitable comparison. On the right is the Yolo Park. I built, I think it's about 30 centimeters tall. In inches I have no idea. But anyway, you can see the differences there. I did not weather the Yolo Park one. Um, so it looks, it looks much cleaner. But um, you can look at it huge huge difference um detail wise obviously your burger one is much more detailed but in fairness to this to this one here it's it still holds up on its own yellow park version i mean if you were to look at this part here right when you compare it to this one here it's you know it's it's pretty close, right? And the arms as well, this upper arm, the biceps area, it's very similar as well. So, I'm still loving this one here, only because built it and also installed those LED lights for his eyes um, but yeah let's compare those legs there and the feet right so looks very good Yeah, in terms of the eyes, I'm thinking maybe I should have gone with cyan instead of uh, light ice blue. I, I think I went with ice blue. In any case, what's done is done. It's all right. No regrets, but yeah. So looks good, man. Looks really good. 
Okay, so we have the uh, Primes Blaster Rifle. I've already inserted the battery. So this one simply uh, comes off. So we have like uh, two notches here and I'm one at the tail end. So you can see where these two go respectively. That's pretty much what holds this thing in. I believe, yep. And there is a switch here, right here. If I flick it up, it'll turn on the lights. There, you can see it down. Turn on there, so there you go. Okay, so that is, unfortunately, um, you'd have to take this thing off in order to turn on the, uh, the lights. So that's the only downside to that. So, yeah. Alright, so that's the blaster rifle. Oh, and it takes... Uh, AG-13, which is and the equivalent for that is the uh, 357. So, if you're ever unsure, always just look it up. They have the equivalent of whatever batteries. Um, yeah. Okay. The, all right. All right. That's it for the last rifle. I just want to highlight some of the moving parts if I can. Um, see if I can manage. But uh, start with this one here. Here, as you can see, it does rise up. Let's turn. Ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't want to let that fall. Let's see that turning there. Cool. And just on the opposite side. See that went in there. Like I said, it's almost it's very similar to um the Yolo Park. Very, very similar in terms of how they uh, designed it. Very nicely done. And of course, you have your hands. These are ball joints, the wrist. Just draw your attention to the fingers. As you can see you could curl them as well. Okay. On well, the arms, they do turn, but it's kind of. Let me see if I can manage. It's pretty tight. Yeah, I don't want to. It's. I'll have to uh, brace it, but it's it's kind of. It does turn though. Anyway, anyway. As you can see, when I was doing that, you can see there's also movement in the waist. Waist movement. Upper torso also. Alright. It's really difficult with this one hand. I'll just try and show you the back if possible. Just give me a second here. If not, well, what can I say? Okay, so I tried bending the back. It's not possible with just one hand. Um, 
so yeah anyway it's it's pretty much like an accordion type where you have like these three movements here they're gonna bend over well so it's it's pretty cool the way it is designed but uh yeah um but otherwise yeah okay so this is a small part I was referring to earlier at the start of the video about these have to be mounted to the the respective hands in order for prime to grip the uh, the gun. So in this case, this one belongs. I already placed the one that that'll go to the right hand. I'm trying to get this thing focused. It's not focusing. There you go. Somewhat. Oops, it's focusing on the back. Alright, see if we can focus here instead. Okay, anyway, this that part there, the race part notches into the hand. So and I will do that right now. Okay, after much trial and error I finally got the uh gun to be inserted in, in Prime's hand. It was actually quite a simple solution. Um, in the manual it, sh it, it shows, um, it instructs us to to insert, attach the insert onto the, onto the grip and then then attach the whole thing onto the hand. I found it much easier to attach the adapter first and then and then the blaster. So okay. um, fortunately because this is on a ball joint it's not as tight so it'll it it tends to droop as you can see here. So yeah, you can see that there. But uh, yeah, otherwise, here you have it. Okay. So, yeah. Cool. Okay, so this pretty much wraps up the uh, Presentation of the three zeros Optimus Prime Premium. Uh, as much as I, I was, as, as much as I would have liked to have shown the articulation, it just wasn't possible with this one hand and my hand on, using the camera on the other. So I don't have a mount as yet. But anyway, um, anyway, I'm just gonna end it on this note. But with the lightsaber, um, I'm just going to see if I can find the proper font. Okay. Let's try that one.
Alright, so this is it. Um, Alright, thanks for watching guys. Appreciate it.